Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to take a moment or so and let a few more folks join in with us for our time together in God's Word tonight. And I uh, hope you've had an absolutely wonderful week. And as I said, we'll just kind of just set tight for a couple of more minutes and I'll let some people join in with us for our, our FaceTime, excuse me, Facebook Live. I'll get it right some time or another. Okay. Okay, Susan Q, I see you're on here with me, Pansy Luke. God bless you for being a part of our evening this evening. It's uh, always good to see the different people that join in with us on a Wednesday night, 6.30, for our time together. We're trying to get out a, uh, a group text so everyone can be uh, uh, knowledgeable that it's taking place and going on, and they can be with us. And my Aunt Darlene uh, from Jay is with us this evening. We love, love y'all. And tell Uncle Michael we said hello. Hey, Brother Jerry, that's right. Uh, you're more than welcome to, to let other people who are uh, joined in with us to, to, to greet them. Brother Jerry's got hi, everyone, so that's great. And uh, we do know that there'll be other people who join us as time goes on, and then someone will catch up a little bit later in the evening or maybe possibly uh, throughout the week sometimes. But, uh, you know, uh, I hope, hope again that you've had a great day. Last Sunday we had Father's Day at church. It was a tremendous day. And I uh, really enjoyed that time together with uh, the family of God. And then as well, let's see, yesterday was my birthday. I enjoyed it so much, I just decided to extend it over into today and just continue to celebrate. And, uh, of course, I think I'm the only one that's thought about that. But anyhow, thought I'd say that. Uh, Sister Doris, God bless you for being with us tonight. And to let Brother Tommy know we're praying for him. Bobby and Francis, God bless y'all for being with us tonight as well. You know, again, I, I, uh, I'm so thankful that we have this, uh, and I guess I said, you know, from week to week, that we've got this medium right here through this, uh, through the internet to be able to share with you. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be at church, necessarily be in the same town, but you, you can join in, participate, and be a part of us. And uh, we thank God for that. And, and uh, it just does our heart good to see you uh, uh, making comments back and forth and uh, see your name pop up on the screen. That's very encouraging. And we thank the Lord for that. Again, this, e again, this evening, uh, I'll say, well, this evening, earlier in the afternoon, uh, the food boxes came in. And uh, uh, we, we get, as we mentioned, 250 boxes. And uh, we send 150 of those north of us to the Laurel Hill area where they are distributed up there. We keep 100 here at the church, and uh, it's, uh, it's gotten, to, gotten to be a, uh, uh, a rewarding and a very smooth operation out there. And uh, as they give out the food boxes, it seems like uh, it's going a lot faster, and we're glad that we're able to minister to people and meet their need. And um, okay, uh, Sister Claudia, good that you can be with us tonight as well. Hello, Sister Bree. Hope you and Brother Vince are having a good week this week. And as uh, as we're delaying a moment or two, we're in, you know enjoying seeing more people become a part of our service this evening. Okay, I need you to join in with me now. I'm just while we're to to uh, just kind of keep you engaged a little bit. I think last week we may had a statement that the God is good, and uh, of course the 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 second part of that is all the time. So if you will uh, use your little keypad right there, and as I say, God is good. You just type in all the time, 
And let's kind of keep that rolling just a little bit right there. So God is good. Tap in all the time. I forget there's a delayed reaction here. It takes you a little bit to, to receive what I've got and then be able to communicate back with me. Thank you, Susie Q. Now, I do want to encourage you as you're, as you're joining in with us this evening, you know, be sure to, that you like our page. Uh, be sure as well, you, you know, you're commenting. That, that's always good to see the comments that come through and how many that we have. Uh, we want, to, want you to, to encourage you to share it as well. I noticed last Wednesday night, just for the sake of looking, I look back and I think overall last week we had 100 Hundred views on Facebook, so that's that is good, and uh, and uh, and I appreciate you participating, helping helping out with that. So uh, if you will, when we finish up this evening, be sure you share uh, this uh, this video with your friends so that they can watch it at a, at another time as well. Let's see here. Okay. All the time, yes he is, yes he is. Okay. This coming Sunday, well, like, like I said last Sunday. We uh, had Father's Day. Hope your dad's enjoyed the day. Had a good gift out of it. Uh, hope you got a, had a good meal Sunday afternoon. I know that we did. Uh, but this coming Sunday, we're going to be recognizing the graduates, the Laurel Hill graduates, who are, you know who are a part of our church family. Uh, some of these students, you may not recognize their names. They do come on Wednesday night, and we do thank the Lord for them. And I'm just going to go ahead and mention their names this evening to you. And uh, and they are. We have Noah Heath. And uh, then we have Christian Sayers, we have Sean Oder, Kylie Cruz, and Kaylee Johnson. Those are our five. If there's any to add to that, you know, I've, I've asked others to let me know, but that's the ones that we are aware of right now. And uh, they do uh, attend, they did attend Laurel Hill School. And uh, it's not that we're just... Uh, separating that school out, but uh, those particular ones are the ones that graduated and they happen to be from Laurel Hill School. And of course, Laurel Hill is a great school and we appreciate them. So if you'd like to get them something, that's up to you. I'm sure that they will welcome it. I can guarantee you they won't turn it down. So anyhow, and again, that'll be this coming Sunday. Remember our, our start time on Sundays now is 10 o'clock and uh, we have just a little over an hour service. And so from 10 to 11, we encourage you to join in. And uh, you know, uh, if you haven't yet, give it a try. Come on out. I know that some you know, feel it's a little bit different because of the social distancing that we are having to practice, but we're doing our best uh, to provide a safe environment for you to come be a part of. Our, uh, the doors open at 9.45. The service begins promptly at 10. Of course, you can watch it on YouTube. And uh, anyhow, uh, come out and be a part of it if it's where you can. Now, if you can, and we do understand that, if you've got some sort of condition uh, where you're you're concerned about your health, please uh, please uh, don't feel compelled to come. Just if, but but if it's where you can come, if you've got a, again a health condition, again don't feel compelled to be here. We're not trying to put a heavy on anybody. We just want you to come participate when you feel like uh, it is your time. Now, while we're going along here, I want somebody just to, and I know this will be a little delay, I want somebody to type in the name or part of the name of last Sunday's sermon. Can you do that? I've got, I've got you scratching your head right now trying to figure out, now, what did he say last Sunday morning? Now, what was the sermon title last Sunday? Uh, and I'm going to give you a moment or two to respond because I know there is a delayed response in that. So, again, I'm asking, what was last Sunday's title? Okay. Hello, Brother Greg. Let's say Greg Geiger with us this evening. He's keeping up the social distancing habits going on in his life as he indicates right there. Okay. Now we're just going to go ahead and into a little time of prayer. And don't forget, when you get a chance, you know, type in last Sunday's sermon. I'm waiting for the first one to, to come up. A part of it, all of it, one word of it, you know, uh, 
uh, if that will uh, maybe uh, help somebody else to put together another word right there. But as we pray this evening, got some prayer requests. Uh, let's remember uh, my wife, Susan, for the Lord to touch and heal her body. I'm so glad that she's able to watch with us and comment with us. And uh, be sure you tell her a hello, uh, a hi, or a I love you. And uh, then Susan Cathrell, we want to lift her up in prayer because she's battling an illness and we're trusting God to touch her. Jerry Lovett, our friend, uh, we're asking you to touch him. Uh, then there's uh, Tommy Dors Dorsey. He'll be having a heart cath next week. Jennifer Franklin's uh, parents, we want to pray for them. And the list just kind of keeps going on and on. And so uh, we want you to help us to pray. Pray. Uh, I know you don't get to see the people that come through out there, and I only see just a handful of them. But uh, on Wednesday night when they come through, a lot of those folks that come through just in, in need of some assistance during these difficult times. And we've got some folks that are, you know, that meet up out here and they put up signs out on the road and they work hard to be sure that uh, we can minister to people in this way. Every one of those families represent a need. And so let's lift them up in prayer. Even though I know you don't know them, I don't, but uh, God does. And uh, we want uh, this, this touch of love uh, to be a blessing to them and that they'll remember that there's a church here at Campton that's, uh, that's doing what we can during this time uh, to minister to these families that are in need. And uh, again, I know there are other needs out there. If you would like to share one, uh, put it on the screen so we can write it down and we can pray later uh, for these needs. But anyhow, let's go to God in prayer right now. Please, there is still so much unrest in our nation right now, so many things that are taking place, and so many things that are going on. Uh, when we really need the, the Lord to move and work, and we just need God to touch uh, and bring the peace that's needed right now and healing healing and spiritually and healing physically. So let's pray. Father, we love you, and we just worship and lift up your precious name. We thank you, God, that we can experience your presence in our home. Thank you, God, in my home I sense your presence, and I'm praying that wherever people are watching, to, watching right now or a little bit later on, that they'll experience the presence of your Holy Spirit in their lives right now. Lord, there's just some, some that are just under such stress, that are under such strain, they're just making it from day to day. I'm asking you to help them. Lord, I pray that they'll feel your, your strength with them. I pray that they'll feel your comfort there. I pray that they'll feel your love. I pray that they'll feel your peace, God. Just help them right now, God, because as it, as it is, as it stands, it looks like in the eyes of some that the place that they're at right now is a place of no hope. But, Lord, our hope is in you. And we claim that right now. We cling to that right now. And I pray for those folks, God, who are just kind of going through this season that we're in, uh, just kind of footloose and fancy free and not really discerning the times of which are, we're in. I pray that an awakening would come into the lives of these folks and that we would see, God, this, the, the seriousness of these moments, the seriousness of these hour, and that we would, as a church, would awaken and embrace this moment and uh, ask God to help us to, to, to make a difference in the lives around us. Heal those who are sick in their body. Strengthen those who are weak, God. Lift us all up in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's see here. Thank the Lord. Okay. Now, as we mentioned, just kind of rehearsing it back with you this coming Sunday. We're looking forward to a great time, 10 o'clock Sunday. Doors open, 945. In our service, we're going to honor our graduates, which are Noah Heath, Christian Sayers, Sean Oder, Kylie Cruz, Kaylee Johnson, and you are welcome to pick them up something. Let's see. Did anybody, did anybody, uh, anybody get, get the sermon title? I'm just kind of looking right now. You're still scratching your head over that one. And... Uh, That's, well, I'm going to wait on you, okay, and to see you. I know you're scratching your head a little bit. I know you're kind of stuck right there, but you just hang in there with it. You're going to get the answer here before this this time is over with tonight. Let's see here. Uh, okay. You know, one of our one of our goals as a church, and I just you, we, we can phrase it in a lot of different ways, is, is to help people find and follow Jesus. Helping people find and follow Jesus. And so uh, with that, with that in mind, you know, 
no matter what we're going through as a church, no matter what we're going through as an individual or as a nation, this remains the same, that we help people who are out there to find Jesus and follow and follow him. Everybody's at a different place in their journey, and we want to strengthen them, help them to keep moving forward as they, they embrace the Lord. But let me let me get into the word this evening. I'm just kind of just talking your ears off, so to speak. And uh, we want to uh, believe God to touch us as we as we talk about God being with us. Now we've uh, we've skipped around a little bit, but what I guess one uh, continuing thing there that we've talked about is uh, being in the middle and being in the middle. And uh, there are some things that uh, I believe we mentioned a couple of Wednesday nights ago or so that it doesn't seem like you can pray away. You can it doesn't seem like you can believe away. It doesn't seem like you can faith away. But you do know that God will provide or God will make a way. And it's, the times we're in, it just seems like we're kind of in a, in a wilderness. And I guess my mind keeps trying to wrap around uh, some words and, uh, that, that we can kind of identify with what's taking place right now uh, around us in our country. And I guess more me, I guess me more focusing in on the virus. I don't know about you, but in the evenings, I do like to kind of take a listen and see what's happening, not necessarily all over the United States, but in this little neck of the woods that we're living in and uh, just trusting the Lord that something will change and turn and see the virus begin to go down. So I'm still looking for God to move and bring it, bring the, bring it to a halt or bring it to a cease. But in the meantime, it seems like we're in the wilderness, and I just want you to realize and understand that no matter what you're going through, that God is with us. That's a part of His name, Emmanuel, uh, God with us. Now we find we find out as we as we begin this evening in the valley, we enjoy God. In, in the valley, uh, we get to know God. On the mountaintops, we get to enjoy God. But we experience God in the wilderness. Now, wilderness is defined in the dictionary as an uncultivated, uninhabited, and an unhospitable place. Uh, now, it's a difficult place to go through, this wilderness that we're talking about. And I want you to try to tie this in to some life circumstance or life situation that you may be going through. The wilderness to some people right now is the loss of a job. They had a good paying job, had some benefits, some good hours. They're, they're laid off right now, waiting to go back to work, but because of everything that's going on, they can. The wilderness for you right now may be a looming divorce that's over you, and uh, you're, you're sad, you're lonely, you're hurt, you feel abandoned, you feel mentally, mentally and emotionally and financially depleted, or the wilderness for you may be your your kids, they're grown, but but not yet a day goes by that you can't seem to get some sort of ease and rest in your spirit about their particular lifestyle. Now, the wilderness for some of you may be that your son or your daughter, they may have just turned 13 years of age, and now you're going through that particular wilderness with them. I need an amen right there. Okay, so the wilderness for you uh, is that you just can't adjust it to being a widow or a widower. Uh, so there's a lot of situations and circumstances where we could tie this wilderness thing in. And I guess that's when I'm looking at it in regards to COVID-19. I'm just kind of looking for an end inside. And I don't seem like I can see right now a light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm not speaking to you out of a lack of faith. I'm just simply saying what I see. I'm not trying to deny reality, but I want to defy it and recognize that in this time that we're in, God is going to be with us. And I want you to feel his nearness. I want you to feel his closeness. I want you to feel his power. I want you to feel his moving. I want you to feel his encouragement because we can't experience God in the times of wilderness. We have to realize and by faith that we're not walking through these places alone. We have to realize that God's going to lead us through this. God's going to guide us through this. None of this has taken him by surprise. But uh, anyhow, a wilderness, wilderness it, it's a season of time. If you're writing a couple of things down, a wilderness is a season of time you feel like you will never get through. Wow. A wilderness is a season of time you feel like you'll never get through. The question is, uh, it, excuse me, the question is not whether or not you're going to uh, have a wilderness experience in your life, but rather, you know, because you are going to have one, how are you going to respond? So I'm asking, how are we responding right now? Those listening in right now, those that will be listening at a different time, how are we responding to what's going on right now? You know, uh, second thing is, 
what will you receive and learn from it? So again, the wilderness experience is a part of our life. It, it, it is right now, and, uh, and uh, it will continue on for a period of time. So the question we've got to ask ourselves is, how am I going to respond? And what am I going to receive and learn from this time that I am going through? You see, in the Bible, the wilderness was both a geographical place, a barren and harsh uh, wasteland, and a metaphor for those times when life is difficult and filled with adversity. Can you just wave at me right now? You know, there are places that we go through that are filled with difficulty, uh, adversity. There are problems. You see, the wilderness experiences are seasons of loss, seasons of opposition, seasons of adversity, seasons of betrayal, abandonment, despair, and it's failure. So the wilderness experience will either push you away from God or draw you closer to Him. You see, if you know, we can experience the great and wonderful and awesome power of God during these experiences that come our way. Now, the wilderness experience, we find that it often follows a mountaintop. Good thing to write down right there. The wilderness often follows the mountaintop. In Matthew chapter number 3, verses 13 through 17, what we find is a recording of John baptizing Jesus in the Jordan. I can imagine everybody celebrated when Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened up, and a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I could, they looked at each other right there, and they said, He is my friend, okay? You know, so 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 thank God. Now I, I just added that in a little bit. I can only imagine how they high fived and you know fist pumped and all that went on goes on with that. But anyhow, it was a celebration time for them. But when they finished up in the book of Matthew chapter number three, Matthew chapter number four says Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. How many of you want to shout right now? Jesus was led, Ray was led, Susan was led, Bobby was led, Jennifer was led by the Spirit into a wilderness area to be tempted and tried by the devil. You so you see, uh, he goes from the, the high, the mountaintop, to the wilderness, a time when life was difficult and filled with adversity. I like to stay on the mountaintop, but you know the mountaintop just don't last too long because you find out before long you got to, you know, you 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 descend off that mountaintop and you go into that wilderness spot, that wilderness place. But something good can come out of that wilderness if we we'll trust the Lord. You know, again, I'm going to ask you, how are you going to respond, and what will you receive? And learn from it. I think sometimes when the wilderness comes along, that you know, unless it really gets uh, gets tight on some people's lives, some sometimes they don't even perceive what's taking place and going on. And that's why I was praying a few moments ago. My mind kind of went that way. I don't. I still don't think that some people, you know, sense or feel like there's a threat taking place in our country, and we're kind of footloose and we're fancy free, and it really hasn't registered yet. But, you know, I, want, I, I believe that everything that's going on right now is helping us to begin to see that, uh, you know, we're getting closer and closer to the time Jesus comes back. And I want, I want to be ready. You know, I, I want to go out of here in a revival, in, with a revived heart, with a renewed heart, with a refreshed heart. I, you know, I want, to, I want to be a person that's looking, and I know you do too, or you wouldn't be joining in here with me this evening. Amen. So anyhow, uh, let, let me keep moving on because we don't have a whole lot of time. So your deepest need, you can write this down if you like, your deepest need becomes a gift when it drives you to depend on God. Wow. Your deepest need becomes a gift. Now, we don't look at it that way. Uh, your deepest need becomes a gift when it drives you to depend on God. A lot of people, through the adversities of life, it has driven them to their knees. Now, remember, it'll do two, two things. It's going to drive you to your knees, or it's going to call cause you to be to run away from God. I spoke to someone some weeks ago and they were talking about the difficulties of life and in that they drew the conclusion, you know, that maybe there's not necessarily a God but a higher power. Well, you know, I didn't talk a whole lot longer after that. I'm looking for an opp another opportunity to engage in conversation with this young man. I just said a couple of things. He kind of let it, let it kind of percolate there in his brain for a little while. But again, your deepest need becomes a gift when it drives you to depend on God. That agonizing, that frustrating, that aggravating, that tension and all of that, when it begins to drive you to you and me to our knees, to a dependence on God, that is a gift. Wow even though we don't look at it that way. 
in the Old Testament, there's a prophet by the name of Elijah. Uh, this guy had, you know, he uh, he was uh, participated in. Uh, there, there are there are 16 huge miracles that are associated with his life. He had a successor by the name of Elisha. Now, and now Elijah with a J in Elisha. Elisha, uh, he had 32 miracles associated with his life. You see, three times in this prophet, this prophet by the name of Elijah, he was fed with divine supplies by ravens, by a widow, by an angel, by a church handing out a box of food. No, okay. Anyhow, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, he prayed on one occasion. A child came back to life. The water of the Jordan divided so he could walk across. Now, 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 uh, Let's we're going to look a little bit closer to a miracle that occurred in First Kings chapter number nineteen. In his response, Elijah had just experienced a mighty miracle on Mount Carmel. It was a showdown of the prophets of Baal and Elisha, the man that was sent by God. The God who answered would be the well, the God who answered by fire would be the God people would serve and worship. The prophets of Baal prayed, they danced, they cut themselves all day long with no answer. Then it was Elijah's turn. So he, he asked him if he would to soak the altar down with water. He prays a short, simple prayer, and God shows up. He brings fire down from heaven and burns up the sacrifice like a huge bonfire. The Bible talks about the water that was in the trench. The fire was so hot it even lapped it up, it says. And so then he takes the, takes the life of the prophets of Baal. This guy is riding on a mountaintop. He is riding high. Then he prays for rain and the extended drought that they were in. It ends, and so he and so he uh said he. But then 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 it goes on to say that uh, Elisha was threatened by this lady by the name of Jezebel, who was Ahab's wife. And she said something like this. After all that had happened, she said, "Before the day is over, I will see to it." that you were dead. Now, God has just given this guy a massive victory on the mountaintop. Now, Elijah falls into a deep depression and desperation. He is absolutely overwhelmed. He goes from one high point to one of the lowest points in his life. It says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 3 and 4, Elijah's response. Elijah was afraid, and he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. He says, and I've got this under him, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah has experienced protection and provision from God, then one angry woman causes him to fall apart. This is the final straw. Some say it's a, it's a straw that breaks the camel's back. Wow. Um, you say, what's going on with Elisha? Elisha's spiritually exhausted. He's not only physically exhausted, he's spiritually exhausted. Uh, Henry Cloud, he's a, he's, a, he's a great counselor, a great man of God, and he says this about pastors. He says, pastors will say they are tired. And he goes on to say, if you are just tired, you could take a nap. You could get some rest and things would be okay. You're not just tired. You're spiritually exhausted and you need to be replenished. Now, that's just not for pastors. That's for everybody. Now, think about that. I'm going to read that to you again and sink in. He says about this, this physical and spiritual exhaustion. And he says, if you're just tired, you could take a nap, get some rest things will be okay. But you're not just tired. You're spiritually exhausted and need to be replenished. 1 Kings 19, 19, 5 and 6 says this, Then he lay down in the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some uh, bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then he lay down again. He just wiped out. Sometimes the most spiritual thing that you can do is get some sleep or maybe take a vacation. Can somebody say amen? Okay, thank you. Psalms 23 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores what? My soul. Now, you notice right here, God does not, God's not scolding Elijah. He doesn't rebuke him. He doesn't challenge his faith. He doesn't preach him a sermon. He just says, get some rest. 
Now, 1 Kings 7, excuse me, 19, 7 through 9, it says this, The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food. I underline that. He traveled 40 days, 40 nights, until he reached uh, this uh, place called Horeb, H-O-R-E-B, Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now, God knew what he was doing there, but he wanted to hear Elijah say it. Can I tell you right here, as God's dealing with, this, dealing with this prophet, he is saying, he is saying, he's saying to us that he is a God of second chances. You can be spiritually exhausted, you can be physically exhausted, both at the same time, and we realize that God is a God of second chances. He'll let us catch our wind. He'll let us get up and get going again. He'll replenish us, but we have to turn to Him. Listen, some of you are just exhausted right now. Mentally, physically, spiritually, you're running on empty. And you need that time in God for Him to replenish you and strengthen you. And I pray that that's some of what goes on on Wednesday nights. The, you know, that's why I kind of push it some and I try to get people to connect together. I try to get us all on, on, online as much as we can. And that way we can kind of encourage each other. And I, you say, well, how do we encourage each other? Can I tell you, just by seeing your name on that screen, it's an encouragement to me. Because I see people who are journeying with me in the middle part of the week, okay? So, uh, let's see here. Get back to where I was at. Uh, he's asking, what are you doing here? And he said, God tells him, you tried to run away from me. You separated yourself from other people. What are you doing in this cave? It's a cave of depression is what it is. It's a cave of of depression. Anybody ever been to the cave of depression? See, this is this is where adversity drove some of you. You're here, but you're you're not here. Remember, this is not this place that he is in is not a place that God had commanded him to go. But God is dealing with him where he's at. Elijah now begins. He begins to open up to God. He's kind of just crying out to God. He replied, "I have listen to what he's saying first. 1 Kings 19, 10. I have been very zealous for you, Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me. Now, again, he's not the only one left, but that's the way he feels. Elijah feels all alone in what he's going through. He feels all alone in what he's fighting. And these thoughts are just, just, just pouring over him right now. And now we see God meet Elijah's deepest need. God begins to bring healing in the middle of his hurt. Remember, your deepest need can become a gift when it drives you to God. 1 Kings 19, 11 and 12 says, The Lord God said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. I underline that. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the, after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. I underline that. After the earthquake, earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. I underline that. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. A powerful wind. Listen, an earthquake, fire. God was not in any of those, but then a whisper. A gentle whisper. You see, if God wants... If God wants him to hear him, why isn't he in the wind? Why not the fire? Why not shout at him? Why not? Why not? Why not, uh, uh, you know, do something just explosive? Why a whisper? Why a whisper? I tell you why, and I felt in my heart, he whispers. He whispers because he's close. See, God never left him. He was right there with him. He whispers because he's close. The devil shouts his lies. The devil shouts his accusations. But God whispers his truth. He says things like, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you always. You can make it through this. I will help you. I won't abandon you. He said, I'm with you in the wilderness. I'm with you in the depression. I'm with you in the storm. 
I'm with you in the valley. He said, I'm here to help you with your marriage. I'm here to help you with your finances. He said, I'm here, I'm here to help you on your job. I'm here to help you with your struggles, with your college. I, he's just saying, I am here. Wow. Wow. He whispers because he's closed. You know, uh, last week I was preparing for a, to preach on Sunday. And you, know, you kind of get in between sometimes in your, in your series and such. And, and, of course, going through what we've gone through as, as, a, as a nation and uh, with the virus and all the protests that's going on and all of those things kind of roll in your mind. I, uh, I do this, this sermon that I preached last Sunday. I just remember the Holy Spirit just whispered to me on, the, on the, a day last week when I'd gotten up and just got a cup of coffee and was about to hit the devotion time. And it was... Uh, just just a few words that he's spoken to my heart and he's spoken to my life to let me know the direction I needed to go in for last Sunday's sermon. Wow. So uh, he whispers if we're just listening close. And if you're listening close right now, the Holy Spirit's telling you that God loves you. If you're just listening close right now, past all the stuff you're on TV, past all the, the, the negative comments that are made around you, I just want you to understand and I want you to know that God loves you and that's what he's saying into your heart, into your life. You see, sometimes when we're stuck in the middle, that was last Sunday's sermon time, I was stuck in the middle with you. Sometimes the middle is messy. The wilderness is a difficult place to be in and go through a lot of, a lot of testing, a lot of trying, a lot of testing. Of course, we do know that back in the, the fourth chapter that we talked about, it, Matthew 4, that Jesus came through the different things that the enemy threw his way. He came through victorious. And uh, we, we're going to do that too. We are going to do that. Don't let life get you down. Keep trusting in God. And remember, he's whispering to you. The Bible says, that Psalm 34 and 8, 34, 18, excuse me, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Wow. Wow. You know, I hope you feel the presence of God right there where you are because I feel him right now. He's here to strengthen. He's here to help you. Hey, this may have been a rough day for you today. It may have been a rough week for you, but I want you to know in this middle of this week is your time of refreshing and renewing. Hey, let's pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we love you, and I pray for people under the sound of my voice right now or even those who are going to be watching later. Lord, I'm convinced that there are some people that are going to be watching later whose lives are not right with you. They're out of fellowship with you. And I'm asking you in Jesus' name to renew that fellowship, renew that closeness, God, and help people to repent of their wrong, repent of their sin, repent of their ways, and come back to you. I pray for our listening audience right now, God, to just strengthen those, God, who are going through trying times, difficult times, battles, rough places, God. Help us to know that this too shall pass, even though we, right now we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though the times are filled with uncertainty, even though, dear God, we're still scratching our head, trying to figure our way through this. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are some things that we know that we can't fake the way, some things we know that we can't obey away, some things we know that we can't pray away, but we do know, you know that you will provide a way, and uh, you have a way for us in the wilderness, oh God. And you're going to bless us. Lord, help us to come through this, we pray in Jesus' name, that, uh, we, that we do gain from it, that as we come through it, uh, that we respond to it in the right way, and that through this, God, you'll touch us, you'll bless us, you'll help us, and you'll be with us during this time. Help us in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, to respond as we should and to receive and learn something from the trying times that we go through. Lift up and encourage tonight, God. And dear Lord, just can't wait to see everybody Sunday for a great time in you. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, hey, it's been awesome tonight. Kind of got carried away, went a bit longer, longer than usual. But I hope you were blessed by it. I know that I have. I've been encouraged just to be reminded that God is with us. And keep listening for him to whisper to your spirit. He's telling you that he loves you, that you're going to make it. And uh, we're, we're all going to get through this. 
and God, because God is going to see us through. Amen and amen. We'll have a blessed rest of the week. Remember, this coming Sunday, our church service time is at 10 o'clock. The doors open at 945. We have five seniors that we're going to recognize this Sunday. And uh, they are Noah Heath, Christian Sayers, Sean Oder, Kylie Cruz, Kaylee Johnson. And be sure you congratulate them on uh, all the hard work they put in to make it through this last school year and they're in a trend they are, are in a transition uh to go into the workforce or go to college so god bless you and we will see you soon love you